as, as kids are leaving us when they graduate, mm -hmm. right? What are the real world skills that we really need students to <laughs> yes. have, right? You've been Those soft on a skills, lot of them, yeah. the collaboration, the teamwork, <laughs> the problem solving that goes along with it, that's gonna make them so much more successful in the long run. Here today in Volga, South Dakota, and we are with Tyler Bolstad at Sioux Valley High School. Tyler, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Pretty good, Matt. How you doing? Doing really good. This is a. I was, we were saying it earlier. I've never been in the Volga School before, but this is an amazing uh, facility you got here. It's yeah, nice. yeah. So this was actually. So I went to school here before becoming the principal. Okay. And so when I was a senior going through school here, this is the area that was under construction. So now it's okay. Now I can reap the benefits as a senior. It's okay. This was just a construction mess that I had to deal with my <laughs> senior year. But yeah, beautiful facility with our gym. Yeah. Nice. And everything's kind of made some progress since then. And You've made some progress in high school too. What's your official role now at, at the school? Yeah, so uh, many hats, right? Uh, <laughs> so I am the six through 12 secondary principal, and then I also teach one class, our multimedia class for our high school. Okay, and then what did you do before that? Have you always been in teaching? And yeah, yeah, so I, uh, I graduated from Dakota State. I got my first teaching job in Brookings. I taught at Camelot Intermediate in their oh. fifth grade program, uh, social <laughs> studies and technology, and then uh, made the jump into administration. I was an elementary principal in Watertown, and then I was the K through 12 principal in Castlewood the oh. year prior to the tornado going through the town. Oh, so, okay. Um, yeah. And then came, came here. It was a, a beautiful moment for my family, full circle. My wife and I were high school sweethearts here, so oh, we got nice. to come back home. So I was going to say a full circle because yeah. you mentioned that you had gone to school here. Yes. So now, now you see what the construction did and think, oh, yeah, like you said, I was there and it was totally worth it. Yes, yes, <laughs> it did turn out well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously in the background, we've got a nice video display. So yes. we're, we're here to talk a little bit about that as well as uh, kind of a, a new topic or product from Dactronics mm -hmm. called Frameworks. But first, can you talk about... Um, just the, the video displays and kind of when you when you got them and what your thoughts were for using those. Yeah, so that was actually, so this is year three for me at Sioux Valley. That was okay. something that we had just implemented prior to me coming on board. So we had just purchased uh, the scoreboards and we were in our infancy with, uh, you know, we had this vision. Um, David Squires on our school board, our administration at the time had this vision of having this real world opportunity for our students uh, in, the, in the career field of media. Um, so that was something where at the time we're just getting launched with some sponsors that we wanted to bring on board um, and, and bringing this class along in its infancy. So the very first couple of years, uh, Mrs. Jill Vincent in our school was the, the teacher that led our media program. Okay. And she was really the one that took it from its infancy into really what it is today. Um, we started our very first year when kids are, okay, what is this media course? What, what does this entail? <laughs> yep. So uh, demand was not as high right away. I think we had two students our very first year in it. You know, typically we would look at that for student requests and numbers and say, eh, I, d I don't know if we're going to make that course go. Um, but we really believed in the vision of, of this opportunity for kids, the hands-on learning that could go with it, as well as just the experience for uh, our fans when they come in, our community when they come into athletic events or mm -hmm. fine arts events. We knew that that was something that could enhance their, their experience as well. So jumped uh, last year again, Mrs. Vincent was leading the course. Um, you know, we probably quadrupled, if not more. So we're talking <laughs> double digit students at yep. that time. Okay. And now fast forward to year three that we have this course and program. And now we're bursting at the seams. We have 26 students with wow. us um, and are able to, um, you know, really divide into different specialty areas. So uh, we have a couple of different groups of students that are working on an events team for us. So they're working on the content for either volleyball matches, football matches, um, sharing upcoming events, and able to just kind of spread our message that way too for some of the, the neat events happening in the school. We have one team that's in charge of internal communication, so helping with um, sharing out messaging to our students. Uh, you know, for example, October 
October is National Bullying Prevention Month. Okay. So they've been working really hard on promoting that message of kindness and respect, empathy mm-hmm. for others, and what to do when those tough situations do happen. Mm-hmm. Um, we have another team that's our external communications. So they're in touch with our sponsors, making sure we got to keep sponsors happy and yeah. make yep. sure that we're, we're taking care of them. Um, but also keeping our community stakeholders involved, right? And communication is always something mm-hmm. that a school, good, better, best, right? We think we do nice things with communication, but we're always seeking to improve that going forward. And then we have, I call it our fun team, right? It's our content creation. So they just get a little bit more loose, a little bit more um, flexibility in terms of what what they're creating and sharing. And so whether that's on our graphic display boards or whether that's through our social media channels, uh, okay. they're having a good time with that. So yeah. yeah. You mentioned like it's starting out with a certain number of kids and growing to what it is today. And I'm just kind of curious, is it you know, when it first started, the kids had so much fun. They tell other kids or right. is it like parents finding out about this and, hey, you guys should really check this out. Like, did it just, it just organically All of the above. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a grassroots thing and, and neat for kids where it's an outlet for their creativity, right? Mm-hmm. And, and kids seek that out, right? They want to have an outlet, a safe forum that way. But it's also just an authentic piece that they can create, right? And they can see whether it's through social media that it's going out or through an actual live event seeing their product come to life that way that's that's neat for adults to see let yeah, alone for yeah. kids to see too so um i think people crave that so it is grassroots where kids to okay this is what the course is about because you can read it in a course description book but it's much different when you hear from your buddy hey this is what we're doing in class this yep. is what we're learning yeah. and these are some of the career opportunities that we can have going forward from it yeah i was right. gonna say that that become part of the conversation too now is that you mentioned career opportunities and i know we've We've talked with people at different levels of, of high schools, colleges, professional sports, and the, the common thing right now of kids are coming in knowing more and more about content or running mm-hmm. video boards than they ever have. So is it, are you seeing that kind of with your students even of when they're going to college, they're thinking about continuing to do that? Absolutely. We're seeing some kids that are taking it and running with it. That's a big focus that we've had here in the first quarter of school. We we talk about learning targets with kids, right? So mm-hmm. start start with the end in mind. What's what do we want to have students know and be able to do by the end of it? And so for this first quarter, in addition to the content more specific to volleyball and football, because we've had, you know, we had matches and events that started before school even mm-hmm. began. So, right, yeah. so we were kind of in catch up mode from the get go. Um, but uh, to focus with the actual learning, it's been career focused in terms of what are the skills and dispositions that you need for a career in this field and being able to have kids summarize what are career opportunities that I have in front of us. So we've been blessed and fortunate through partnerships with Dactronics and some staff that you have there that we were able to uh, Zoom with some folks that have uh, tremendous experience in the fields. Uh, mm-hmm. One was uh, a former executive director of operations for the Detroit Pistons. So we got to hear from her <laughs> oh, yeah. and uh, share her stories then about what that's like running the live events. Yep. Diane. We, yep. Yep, 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 Diane. Yep. And then we had, I believe the gentleman's name was Mark. Yep. And so he was uh, formerly with the Jacksonville Jaguars and with the University of Florida. Florida yep, yep. I met and, him at the University of Florida. Yeah, so, yep. yeah. And similar, we're just able to hear from someone that's been there and done that, right? And right. see where that can be a, a, a lucrative and and fulfilling career path for kids. And then each of them did a tremendous job too when they were talking with the kids, um, being able to share uh, other opportunities, right? Because sometimes we get into you know, pigeonholing that it's a, a sports specific, yeah. but there's so much more to it than even mm-hmm. live events with sports. Yep. Yeah. So all the, all the different digital things that they're creating, obviously part of that, like you said, is could go to social media. Some of it can go to the displays. Mm-hmm. So the, the class is that kind of focused on just every aspect of your digital media. And that includes making all of the content for the displays. Correct. Correct. Now, and some of them are a continuation from student. I mean, we're, we always build off the shoulders of those that came before us. Yeah, so right. I'm building yeah. off the shoulders shoulders of Mrs. Vincent and her work from last year and similar for our students where, I mean, there's still good work that we display up on the boards that, that students had previously created in, in prior years. And so that doesn't go to the, the wayside either, right? So that's yeah. a, I don't know if you want to call legacy that way necessarily, <laughs> but you know, you're, yeah. you took this class as a freshman and now you're uh, a junior and you can still see, yeah, that was a really good graphic that I made, or that mm-hmm. was a really neat product that I created. And so you can still have that lasting impact even even once you're not in the course. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was going to say, when you were mentioning how it's kind of categorized out, it was almost sound like a college. You said you had like, you know, internal communications, mm -hmm. external communications, all these different things. And when we came in here this morning, you had a class going on. Yes. Which you told us already you needed a lot of space for how big it is out here right outside the gym. But, um, you know, you were just kind of talking about the, the popularity of it going. But then when you're in the class, you kind of help categorize and break things out. And that's I know we're in marketing, so mm -hmm. it made me think of content marketing, right? You mentioned the, the bully awareness month and mm -hmm. things like that. So when you're in the classrooms, you're also kind of doing that, right? Like you're having someone focus on specific topics that they then create uh, content for. Sure, sure. Uh, and, and it's really dependent on what time of year, yep. what are the events coming up. Uh, so, I'll, for example, we have a home, our, our last home regular season football game tomorrow night. And so it is military appreciation night. It's also senior night. Uh, so that was one where we're dividing out and I'm saying, okay, this student, go ahead and take and run, uh, work on a military appreciation graphic that we can share for when we bring our, our military folks down onto the field to recognize them tomorrow night. Uh, then to a different student, I was telling her, all right, uh, when we're recognizing our seniors, right, we need to have something that we're putting up on the board that way. Um, so she was working on a specific graphic. I had one, uh, gentleman that was working actually with someone from a different team so some cross collaboration where we're honoring our seniors our senior athletes in all of the different sporting events um, so again he was he was working on that too so it is uh, delineating delegating in terms yeah. of how, how we're rolling versus um, we had uh, our, our content creation team at the beginning of the year made a larger project that we called our our full house staff introduction right so if you okay. watched full house back yeah. in the day yes. yeah, that, uh, oh, you did one the of theme those song. we did oh. one of those yeah yes. yeah so that was a larger one so that was <laughs> yeah. one where the whole team is working together yeah. on that same project That's but then fun. it's breaking down the individual components from there so it's really really specific to what's the project or what are the events coming up and it's okay. really a win-win right because it's one of those they're getting very good experience, like even if it's working in teams, cross teams, mm -hmm. making the content, thinking about careers in it. But then even from your side too, right, it's the, you have all these ideas, and you call them marketing ideas, promotion ideas, but if you don't have the time to get them all done, then it's, everything goes by the wayside and you don't make a big impact. So you're able to come up with awareness for this, military night for this, and kind of have them help make sure content gets made for it so it doesn't just fall off. Absolutely, it's a win-win. So, you know, as my role as a, as a principal here, being able to get some of that messaging out that we yeah. want to have, absolutely, that's a win for us. So it's kind of a neat, you know, I say a lot of hats are dual roles, but it, it, they blend very well together. Mm -hmm. And so that's what makes it fit and work well. Okay. And, and when you're creating that content, um, like what kind of tools are they using? I know we have a few tools from Dactronics that are provided and, mm -hmm. and obviously Frameworks is one of the newer ones. Mm -hmm. um, is it kind of just assigned to the student and the student takes it and says, okay, I'm going to use this tool to create this piece of content or how does that work? Yeah. So typically Frameworks is our go-to for content creation. And, uh, you know, we've had, um, Reese and Sarah from Dactronics mm -hmm. coming in and helping to train both me and the students on show control and how, okay. how that's going. Um, but also the, the content creation piece with frameworks. And so we've had them in multiple times to be able to show some of these different tools for kids, how to layer graphics. Um, Sarah is also a great photographer. And so she is often at these events and taking great sideline pictures for us. And so then we upload them into our brand photo. So then students, when they're making their next um, senior night graphic, right? So they can say, all right, here's an image that's already taken. It's approved as one of our Sioux Valley branded Mm -hmm. approved photos that we can like use. one-offs every time. Right, it's right. It's, it's all in one place for them to be able to look at it. Um, and then we were talking a little bit before too, where it's very slick, where we don't have to really mess with the pixels or some of those different things. So, you know, there's different sizes for the scoreboard. If we have the, the bottom row with the score showing, or if we want the whole screen to show, uh, our kids don't really have to worry about that piece so much because that frameworks program, it, it's all in one in terms of it automatically will shrink and adjust and, and be more intuitive that way. So it's a win for our kids to have that amount of, uh, of options at their disposal. Um, and they're just continuing to learn and grow it as they're um, experiencing it. Yeah. yeah. And we'll, we'll define frameworks really quick. It's a, <laughs> yeah. a content design platform that helps anyone really design something that looks more professional um, and it kind of helps benefit the brand by having that, you know, more crisp, polished look, right? Um, and you can 
um, pre-edit templates or, or edit pre-created templates mm -hmm. with this and it can make animations, other graphics, and make them look really nice on the video display. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, have to get that in there so people understand exactly <laughs> what, if, what we're talking yeah, about Yeah, so I was going to say, because you've had, so this board has been here for three years, is yes. that what you said? Yep. So, and Frameworks is relatively new, like mm -hmm. really new at the time of this yeah. podcast. Um, when did you, how did you hear about it? I, mean, well, I know there's a lot of Dactronics people that live involved sure, in stuff, sure. but was it, it's kind of a two part question is, um, when did you kind of hear about it? But then how did you know you like, what were you doing prior that made you so interested in wanting? Well, this was something where probably about you know, late July, August area, I had Sarah reach out to us and say, Hey, this program, can I come and meet with you about it? Um, so that was kind of the infancy of it was mm -hmm. some, some before school days between, uh, Sarah Reese and I were coming in and doing some training on how show control runs and then getting our kids set up with uh, different student accounts so that each individual student can work on, on okay. their creation. So we do have nice. 26 accounts for our kids right, okay. uh, to be able to be in there and, and working on frameworks that way. So it was something where I would say we really hit the ground running with it. Yeah. Um, but based on that support that we've had from, from you guys at Dactronics, that's been something that's been a win for us at awesome. the beginning of the year. So then prior to that, um, were there like struggles you had that frameworks kind of helped solve? I know you mentioned yeah. some of the brand stuff. And kind of the you know the full frame versus score stuff like sure. was, was there any like problems that it helped fix? For yeah, the well, I'll, I'll use this example, right? I think back to graduation video a year ago, and that's something that um, we want to make sure is is an opportunity for honoring our kids and a special opportunity. So we had some of our student council members that were working on a graduation video for honoring the seniors as they're going through, and uh, they were taking the videos in portrait mode, right? Okay. And so then it's the pixels of okay, when it's in portrait mode up there what do you do there's the a lot of black or? on the side and yeah. okay, how do you troubleshoot <laughs> this and how are you you know splicing together different videos and and i think the end result was okay um but it's not it, it's not at the level that i would want for for honoring our kids as we're going through so mm -hmm. again that just takes out it has that consistency piece to it where it's not something that's a struggle that way for mm -hmm. splicing together. Okay, this one's in portrait mode or this one's in landscape mode. This one has this many pixels. It just has that consistency built in that makes it more user friendly that way. And I got to imagine easier to, I would say, retrain, but I'm already thinking, I know it's your first year with this, but it's the, you, t you already mentioned building on the legacy of people behind you, right? But it's next year when the new students come in. Mm -hmm. It's got to, I imagine making that onboarding almost, I say onboarding, it's a class. <laughs> yeah. I'm already thinking of it like it's <laughs> employees that <laughs> work, but um, it's got to make that process easier, right? Because you already have things set up for even however graduation goes this year, the next year students already have stuff ready for them to just kind of jump right into. Templates are in place yeah. at that yeah. point, yeah. Well, and you said you have 26 students right now, so... I mean, even if a few of them are back, there's extra experienced students that can help the new new group of students in there. And is is that the main group of users? Is is all students at this point, or can other people jump in and, and help out if they need to? For frameworks, y yeah, yeah, yep. It's been the students right now that we yeah. have those 26 accounts. We do have. So I, I mentioned, you know, the previous two years that we've had students. So they have been invited to come back. Uh, that is something that students are paid. That's another part of the course where they have to come in and work at least one live event, oh, right? Okay. Just oh. to see okay. what it's like to... That's got to help, right? It, it, right, yeah. right. <laughs> and and it's funny where you see, you know, some nerves initially and it's, okay, it's a live audience. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the real deal, right? You're getting that authentic experience. That is something that we do as a paid position for them. So they do get paid since it is outside of the the yeah, school time sure. for the uh, volleyball or football games, but you can just see, okay, maybe some apprehension right away. And, you know, we, I was doing a volleyball game with a couple of, of girls that were uh, from the class and doing it. And, you know, one turns to me after the first set and it's, you know what, this is, this is really fun, yeah. right? They, yeah. they kind of get into it and excited. And so yeah. they can start to see, all right. And now we've got some of them where uh, the, the class requirement is you have to do at least one live event, right? Okay. Um, to come in and do that. And then we have some where they say, you can sign up for more. More, and we have some that it's a part-time job for them where they, okay, cool. volleyball game this week, I'm signing up for that one and I'm going to work that one because you can just see the comfort growing and growing for them. Yeah. And even with that, do you see like the experience of seeing what they're actually creating on the display and helping Absolutely. run it applied in the classroom too? Absolutely. So I go back to that full house video. That was one that we created the video for. Uh, we did it between, I think, sets 
one and two mm. for one of our volleyball games. And so it was that same night with the gal that was saying, oh, this is fun. I'm really enjoying this. You could just see everybody's head turning in the crowd, <laughs> looking up, and you could see the smiles on their face as they're going. And I just kind of lean forward to them and I say, That's why isn't this special? <laughs> yeah. Look at look at the impact that you can have with the work that you do and with uh, some pre-planning to, to make it happen. Yep. So... No, that's awesome. And then it's so. What sports kind of all do they sign up for? So I know you have in the gym here. I think I've heard you mentioned volleyball, yep. like basketball, and then football. Are those kind of the main three? That yep. You can so the main one. So right now it's it's volleyball would be our internal one with the scoreboard that you see in here, and then we have the external on the football field. So those are the two sports that we have the live events going gotcha. right now. Uh, once it's winter season, we have both girls and boys basketball going, so they would both be here in the gym. Um, and then right now with our our spring sports, there wouldn't be any in the gym we would have softball going track mm-hmm. and field and golf mm-hmm. so um and and with our track and field i mean it is a combined complex with the football field and the track but i think i was talking with val earlier where typically it's you need to show the scores or the the race times yeah. with oh, the yeah. scoreboard yeah. at that time yeah. rather than full house videos or things <laughs> like that so <laughs> right yeah. um and maybe even more with the content creation side maybe what were you doing before frameworks before this year and has that changed the process has it sped it up at all oh absolutely um you know i'll not being an expert with with all that mrs vincent had i think it was all right we'll maybe use CapCut or we'll use um canva or some different tools like that but to have uh, an all-in-one type of, of program has made it smooth for me this year. There you go. And nice. do you use it for things outside of sports? I know you mentioned media class though helps with social media and things yeah, like that. So yeah. it's not always just the video board, but it's everything. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll give you this example. I had a, a student where his activity or assignment, he's on the external communications team. And so he's working on some kind of branded images for us with our mission statement, our vision statement, our motto, and some of our core values. And so to have that have a consistent look to it, mm-hmm. um, and so it's using a lot of the templates that are already on frameworks, but it's adjusting it from, uh, I think instead it was like an upcoming events template. So instead okay. of saying upcoming upcoming events on the side, now it says uh, mission statement, right? And then sure. he has listed our mission statement. But to have that consistency with the branding where it's the same Sioux Valley colors, the Sioux Valley fonts, the, the Sioux Valley fonts, logo. Yeah. So we just have all of that built in. Yeah, full digital marketing class going on there <laughs> yeah, it seems like it and then you mentioned like game day production then and then they signed up for it kind of what is the game day production like is it just um just people at the scores table hitting buttons or kind of how are students involved in the overall game day production so they start by making a game script right so okay. looking at what would be nice. the actual script that we would go through what do we need for pre-game what do we need for in-game what do we need for post-game um you know thinking specific to volleyball, okay, what are we going to do between set and one and two? Mm-hmm. What are we going to do for our timeouts? Uh, part of that is we need to make sure uh, we have our six premier sponsors that we need I was just gonna an advertisement for that, that right? Yep. So making sure that we're we're taking care of our sponsors that way. And um, so it's the coordinating with the pregame script to begin with. And then uh, during the week, so for example, the the Flandreau football game tomorrow night, right? So we're working on our pregame script for that. So we mm-hmm. know what to do uh, pregame in conjunction with our PA announcers, in mm-hmm. conjunction with, all right, I said it was senior night and military appreciation night. So making sure that we're coordinating that. And then a lot of it is um, almost on the fly training with the actual sport, yep. right? That That's something where- Understanding and so I, how the sport goes. Yeah, yeah. so what's yeah. a kill? What's a spike? What's an, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, some of those different things. All right, when do we want our fans to make noise? When we're on defense, not on offense, yeah, right? Yeah, some yeah. of those yeah. different details. The Peyton so, rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Understanding that game flow and the terminology that <laughs> yes. goes with each game. So is that yeah. part of the, the classroom then overall? Like I know there's probably part of that, but then you mentioned you have, you know, 26 kids now, but I know you're not gonna have all 26 of them are they all writing up their own scripts, working game day? Is it kind of like whoever signs up for that week, that's the group that has to help put together the script? Usually or? it just rotates, right? Okay, so okay. it's, uh, you know, for this game, you're in charge of the Flandreau game. Uh, for this one, you're in charge of the Chester game. And so making sure that we're kind of designating oh, okay. that way. Um, and then 
communicating. So it could be from that team that kids are working that live event. They might be from a different team too. So that's usually the day before an event. It's okay, let's make sure that we get over to show control, be able to make sure we know where the buttons are and how, how the <laughs> okay. flow is going to go. And that's also why I'm there for the events too, is just yep. to yeah. kind of be the fail safe that way. But <laughs> so we'll have that game script printed out and ready for the kids to go on, on those game days. So it's kind of mixed up, mixed around a bit. So everybody gets that experience right. and they get to experience creating the script and, and <laughs> yeah. running show control and seeing their graphics up on the display. Have you noticed any any uh, crowd reaction or fan reaction to to the game day productions that you've been putting together? I mean, you mentioned everybody turning the and full the house smiling. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so those, we've had some kids working on hype videos for us. Okay. Uh, oh. So again, kind of pulling in some of those brand photos that Sarah or others have um, have taken some some videos or some pictures for us and creating those. So again, that's fun to, and again, communication skills for our kids to coordinate. All right, we've got our pep band going. We also have our hype video going. Uh, so making sure that they're not going at the same time yep. and coordinating and communicating that way before the game. If you've got audio playing with it, you're gonna to wanna to hear it. So right, yeah. That. right, yep. yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I gotta think, um, what was it like maybe that, I would say the first time, you? so you were here though the first time the boards were turned on? Yes. So like how was even that, I'm just, I know with the contents part of it too. Even, even like, just watching them installed was yeah. was neat, right? Where it's okay, <laughs> yeah. the equipment that it takes to get them up on the wall and, and mm -hmm. just the excitement of um, something new, right? Something yeah. new, something exciting, something we knew was going <laughs> to be good for our community and our community stakeholders. Absolutely. Yeah, was it kind of a smooth process seeing that installation go up and, and what was it like that, that first few events? Well, I didn't drop a sweat bead from it. You know, they were <laughs> they were professional. They knew what yeah. they were doing. So it was yeah. me probably uh, just being a looky-loo and seeing, yeah. okay, how are, how are they going to do this? But, uh, you know, just from the, the first events, right, it's, there was a lot of work that was done on the front end and I Again, I'll give a shout out to Mrs. Vincent and also to uh, Mr. David Squires, our school board president, where he was he was one that really saw the vision and the possibility of this too. And I know that there was a lot of time and effort that he put in. Um, like I said, we had events this year prior to the class even starting. Mm -hmm. So you think about year one happened the same way. Class hadn't even started. We have two kids in the class as opposed to 26. 26 so yeah. there was a lot of time and effort from uh, David, from Jill to to make this a possibility. You probably couldn't throw as much content as at those two kids as right, you can right, now with yeah. the 26 <laughs> different ones. But I'm thinking even, I mean, uh, more back into frameworks, I know you've talked about the classroom, they help out. Um, and then there's also 26 unique accounts. Is it cloud-based? They all have their own laptops. How does it get to the board? Can you kind of just uh, give an overview? How does all that work? Yeah, right? yeah. So it is cloud-based, right, yeah. where they have their own account. Uh, they were a one-to-one -one school with, with laptops, mm -hmm. so they would each have their own laptop that they're able to sign in with. That's something where we are, uh, let's say, once they have that created on Frameworks, they're going to export that and save that, and whether most kids will do it to a Google Drive or a Flash Drive or something of that nature. And then we have uh, the specific computer in here, in the gym and then up in our crow's nest as well. So we have to get that content from the Google Drive or the flash drive to what we call the Z drive then. And that's okay. the one that's hardwired into the computer and that's what talks from the computer to the actual scoreboard. Okay. Okay. So it is kind of a file transfer process once we get it from frameworks mm -hmm. uh, to somewhere where we're storing it. Our students use Google Classroom too, so that's mm -hmm. where they submit a lot of it. So, sure. so we're, we're pretty familiar with Google Drive and being able to take it from Google Drive over to uh, the Z drive for the computer yeah. to to be able to talk to the scoreboard. Because that's kind of the yeah. question, right? Is like the initial investment or hardware investment into frameworks is really just, you don't really have to buy much. It's, it's the accounts, it's the software, it's kind of that kind of stuff because you already had the laptops, you already had stuff to run the display. So it's kind of a... You didn't have nothing arrived in packages. You just right. had it one day, yeah. and you were able to go, be off and running. Yep. So that was pretty smooth between <laughs> uh, folks at Dactronics, where they're messaging me saying, "Okay, we're we're ready for these licenses. You have this many licenses, so we could start assigning some emails to them." And then that was something that I did first week of class with the students was actually assigning to them, uh, "Okay, this is your account. This is your password. Mm -hmm. Some of those different things." But once they had the the URL for it, once mm -hmm. they had the username and password. It's been hitting the ground yeah. running and learning about the actual techniques rather than the not so fun yeah. stuff yeah. of getting set up. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned a couple things that it can do, like the the one button click to go, you know, lower third and, and or remove it and go full screen. Are there any other features that stand out to you that are like uh, I really like this feature, or have you heard from the students at all things that they like about it for show control, show control or framework specifically? Yeah. Um, 
Let's see here. So for show control, being able to use our, our pregame slideshow mode, right? That's been something that's been very successful where, okay, we're creating um, some of the game day graphics. And so being able to use that as, as a slideshow and piece them together so it doesn't feel as overwhelming, like you have to create a million different things for a game. It's okay, we have some things established that way. Uh, show control, I, or excuse me, with frameworks, I'd mm -hmm. say it's getting more and more familiar with some of the outside tools such as um, you know, some of the Pexels or some of the other video background things. Mm -hmm. um, kids the other week were learning about how to overlay things. So you had a, an image, mm -hmm. you were messing with the transparency of it, so making it less transparent. You put another image over the top of that. In between, you layer some effects like smoke or fireworks or things like that to just make the visual pop, right? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so if I'm doing a showcase for one of our seniors, right, I'm able to really emphasize his picture maybe blur out some of the other background type of things and really make it pop with, with some of those added features. So th that was kind of one where it's, oh, yeah. this is what this can do. Yeah. And it does look professional. And so that's, that's yes. exciting for them where it doesn't look like JV League. It doesn't look <laughs> yep. like the minor leagues. It looks yeah. like what you would see when you go to uh, a larger larger sporting event. So yeah, that's right. been exciting. It's almost like there's this content creation best practices that they're, that they're even learning. And I'm not sure if that's what part of what you teach them yeah. to. It's not just put a picture up there and their name and call it good. Well, it's like, a, how do you make it look a little nicer and more professional? Yeah, that's actually part of the Dactronics curriculum that we've been toying with and rolling okay. out is, okay, what what makes it look professional versus what makes it look, hmm, okay, that, that's a little Throwing bit sketchy. So or, talking yeah. about color contrast with the kids, talking about font sizes yes. and making them easy, sure. uh, making good use of the space that they have. So those are all things that is actually part of the, the Dactronics curriculum that we're, we're sharing with them. There you nice. go. That's perfect. Because, yeah, we said it even when we were coming in and, and you started playing through some of the content on here, the way it animates on and off, mm -hmm. too, was, yeah, this looks... This is a high, there's a high school that we're yeah. at right now, and it's right. kind of one of those, like, it's, everything you've been saying is exactly like how it looks when it comes up on there. So it's great to have that curriculum in there as well because sometimes you can get a nice board, mm -hmm. but I think the phrase, it's garbage in, garbage out. If you put in boards, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter how nice the display is. Sure. If you don't know how to handle the content correctly, it's not going to pop or stand right. out as much, so that's awesome to hear. Yeah, and is there anything that you've seen them working on or you know that they've been working on in the classroom that you're kind of excited to, to unveil? Anything oh, are you trying you can... to break news? Or you oh, you know, any, any teaser here or sneak <laughs> peek that people might get a view of? Is so there a Full House one coming up? Well, or? we've got <laughs> our content creation team, so we've been working on we do have bosses day coming up next okay. week so we've got uh, something in the works for our superintendent mrs schuster you know kind of <laughs> it, it's nice to have some of those touchy-feely moments sure. as well yeah uh, let's see here like i said we've been having some of the anti-bullying content coming up mm -hmm. it's uh national school bus safety week next week okay. okay so we've got some content dropping that way to highlight our transportation director and our bus staff and nice. um let's see here what else do we have brewing <laughs> and, and then it'll be conferences before you know it. So yep, making yeah. sure we're communicating that with uh, parents and, and making sure that we have um, open our doors that way and we can have that good two-way dialogue. So I'm not sure if we're we've said this many times, I think almost every episode, the Dactronics curse, which now is more the industry curse, we say, is when you have a display like this and you're using it, now whenever you're watching things on TV or you go to other sporting events, you end up looking at the board and seeing what they're doing and you break it down in your head. You wonder if I want to use that because it comes with what idea hacking was yep. another term that we hear from a lot of different producers from different levels that we talk to, right? So I don't know, it's part of, do you have, do you have that curse? <laughs> I mean, we're close to Halloween here, so they might. Sure. But yeah. you, and then also I wonder if, the, if it happens to some of the students too, like if they go home now or, or go to a Twins game or a Vikings game, I wonder if they see things and they wonder if they bring it back to the classroom. Well, I know Jackrabbit games have been hitting or a little Jack different Rabbit for games. me lately. Yeah, where, okay. okay I'm, <laughs> I'm looking, all right, yeah, they're doing that video right before as they're counting down yeah, the last 30 yeah. seconds. And huh, I wonder how we can make that and incorporate some of those. Yeah, beg, borrow, and steal for some of the, <laughs> the, yeah. the ideas. Yeah, right always down there. Yeah. Every time we ask someone, it's a, a different term as to what they call right, it. Right, right. So, yes, I would say that that is something that you become more and more aware of. Um, even something as simple as, okay, for some of the, 
uh, the Dactronic scoreboards, but even with our announcements that are scrolling through oh, yeah. on our screens, right? Okay. So how can we take our graphics on there from good to better to best? So yeah. always looking to, to improve and see see what else is out there that you might not have thought about and implement that into your, your own Absolutely. productions. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, maybe one final question here is if, if there's another high school that's kind of thinking about, okay, we've got some curriculum, we've, we're doing some digital media stuff. Um, is, is there any suggestion you'd give them about, about frameworks or, or the Dactronics uh, setup and what we're doing? Partner with you guys right away because this has been such a blessing. This is not something, you know, I, I obviously had technology teaching experience, but this was not something that was specifically, um, you know, I didn't go through college uh, doing scoreboards and yeah. doing show mm-hmm. control or anything like that. This has been newer to me, but it's been very user friendly. It's been very exciting. It's very motivating for students. Uh, it's real world, it's hands on. And mm-hmm. so I think it's been a great experience and I'm excited to see how we grow, right? So I'd say uh, we have some good things going on, but we want to continue to can, grow it too. So how can we yeah. make it uh, continue to be a better experience for our kids and for our community when they come to our events? Because I think that's what we hear a lot when we've talked with uh, high schools and, and other states before too, is that there may be a sticker shock, right, of a, yeah. of a new video board. I'm going to say it's not cheap, but it's a new video board. You see the number, you're like, oh, man. But there, it's not just a video board. I mean, everything we've been talking about here today has been a lot about what it's done for the students and the community. Sure, it can help generate ad revenue to help pay it off and everything, mm-hmm. so that definitely helps, but it's almost, it's not just a video board. The education side of this is something that I feel like schools have to pay attention to as well, right? It's an investment in our kids and mm-hmm. in our community, right? So. Uh, the opportunities that can it can provide, the hands-on learning that it can provide, the uh, future career opportunities that it can provide, and the experience that it provides to mm-hmm. the people that come into the school. Uh, All together, it makes it well worth it. Because everyone, you don't yeah. have to be in sports to be involved in sports. That was right. the one, one school yep. we talked to. It was like kids that would have nothing to do with the basketball game, football game, or anything are now involved in like the new video display they yeah. got there, running it, doing all this. Now they want to do it in college. So it's it's one of those, yeah, maybe in the in the gym, but it's not just for athletes and stuff like yeah. that. It's also well, for anyone else. I tell you what, so a story about a conversation I had just the other day, right? So I was taking a, a group of kids up to the crow's nest and we were working on making some buttons mm-hmm. for this upcoming Friday, uh, coming down and I had a gentleman saying, all right, uh, he's out for football this year. And he's saying, next year, I want to I wanna be with you in the booth and, and be doing these football games. And it's, oh, you're not planning on going out for football next year? And it's, ah, no, I, you know, just heart isn't really in it. That's something maybe my parents want a little bit more than, than yeah. I actually want to do. Um, but this is a student that has been just shining yeah. in this class and taking to it and has the interest and doing pet projects on his own outside of class time. Okay. So not even just what I'm uh, sharing with them and having them do, but he's making individual videos for the players and he's just yeah. taking it and wow. running with it. Um, so when you say being able to be connected to it without being directly in the sport, mm-hmm. you know, it provides a great Speech. opportunity for a student like that to to have that sense of belonging and connection yeah. to our school yet. And, and everybody can see, and, and it's just a source of pride for him. It's yeah. a source where uh, shining where it may not shine in some other different areas. And so it just provides a neat opportunity for kids. Yeah. They can still be on, on the production side. They can be in the, the graphics and the digital creation side and art side of things yeah. if they're interested in that and, and not even be interested in sports itself, but create the things that they're interested in for that. And the teamwork aspect of it, right? So yeah. as, as kids are leaving us when they graduate, mm-hmm. right? What are the real world skills that we really need <laughs> students to yes. have, right? You've Those been soft on a skills, lot of them, yeah. the collaboration, the teamwork, <laughs> the problem solving that goes along with it, that's going to make them so much more successful in the long run. Own, yeah. Owning projects. And there's like a couple of times where you're going through what they have to do. And to keep reminding myself again that this isn't college because <laughs> right. those are exactly things that they can use at the college level too. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And they can get it all here and, and start from, from Sioux Valley and work their way up. Right. right? <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. the, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. Tyler, this is fantastic. It's been great to hear, hear the story here and, and what you're doing with these students in the classroom. So thank you for, for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me on. I appreciate your time. Yep, thank you.